Welcome to Critical Hit, a major spoilers podcast. Thank you so much for downloading and checking us out this week. We're so excited to have you here with us today. And by you, I do mean you with your headphones on your head or your speakers cranked up. Uh, hopefully, now that it's getting close to summertime, you have the top down and the speakers cranked up so everyone can listen to the adventures of Critical Hit as you uh, cruise down the streets and are stuck in traffic. Share the love. That's what I say, Kevin. Share the love. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I can't advise going on a real life drifting thing, but that doesn't seem safe. But any other way of consuming the show, please have at. Um, so last time, on you guys uh, helped uh, eliminate the gremlin menace that was infesting your ship, uh, but you found that the squeaky clean had been severely sabotaged in the process, and you needed to dock uh, urgently to make repairs. And so you reached out to a trio of dwarven friends, Brenson, Sirius, and Duthane, uh, and requested an urgent tow and they agreed to take you to Star Citadel Herhod. And from there, you can go around the rest of the asteroid belt known as the Diaspora and try to make your repairs. Nice. Uh, we need some repairs made. Uh, and let's not forget that a couple episodes ago, uh, Rain, your patron and benefactor, uh, informed you that she had the coordinates of the next race, or at least details about it, and uh, had given you instructions to meet her uh, just outside the edge of this solar system uh, past Octurn. And that was some time ago. So you guys are on a bit of a clock. And with that, uh, we will open to a uh, slow, slow docking procedure as. Um, a the Brinson Sirius and Duthane pull up uh, up their uh, dwarven uh, tow truck spaceship. Uh, it is one of those <laughs> spaceships that has a, a, a giant hook, you know, like a giant claw on one side. And you're like, really? They just built a spaceship with one claw? And you're like, why, why would you ever do that? And then the claw comes up and it snatches uh, the squeaky clean and it's exact so that it uh, can somehow um, uh, kind of reel it in. Uh, to uh, the Star Citadel. Ooh. Uh, and uh, your your short-range communications work, so uh, Brenton, uh, Sirius, and Duthane pull up a screen uh, and uh, chat with you from just across the way. Hey, all. Hey. How you doing? I mean, we've been better. Yeah, thanks, thanks so much for the help, really. We'd uh, be possibly dead without you? Oh, yeah, we're happy to get you all on your feet, but the kind of repairs your ship needs, that's going to cost some credits. Um, <sighs> here, we're we're docking in, uh, in Hairhod, um, but uh, we're going to need to drop you off somewhere, dock your ship and such. Uh, the, the mining syndicate that runs Hairhod, uh, well, they don't take too kindly to non-members staying on the premises, you see. I mean, uh, why would they? With that, you uh, pull up and you're at like a little temporary docking facility. They haven't even brought you into a, a docking bay, but um, they can establish the airlock between your two ships and you guys can all talk in person. So what does it take to become a member of this uh, of this syndicate? Do we get a discount on our parts if we uh, pay a membership fee or something? Oh, no, sorry. It's uh, one of those kind of birth citizenship type deals. Only dwarves. Oh, man. Everyone's always against us androids. Well, I think in this case, they're against everyone who's not a dwarf, so wouldn't take it too personally. Well, we're kind of used to a lot of other people raiding the Star Citadels for lost technology that the dwarven people came up with. So then they said only dwarves in the Star Citadel mining consortium. and so. Just saying, what? it's an explanation. Oh, no. Appreciate it. Um, how much is the fee? Oh, um, no, I, I'm saying we will drop you off anywhere you want. Oh, uh, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. But 
you know, within the diaspora. Right, right, right. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, any place you'd recommend? Uh, and by the way, so every every time one of them talks, it's a different one. Um, like but one they all have the same you, voice. But they all have the same voice, yeah. Fantastic. Um, you can tell them apart by hair color. That's about it. Uh, so let's see. There's, uh, there's Chainbreaker 1. Got some Android fellows over here that uh, might agree with what you were just saying there, Bob. Uh, they uh, think their base is real secret, but uh, we've known about it for a while. Uh, then there's the free captains. Uh, kind of pirates, that is. Dangerous folks, but always open to desperate people looking to make some quick credits. Uh, then there were some xenobiologists over at the brood nest. But I think they all might all be dead by now, so no luck there. Diaspora is a, a big place, but uh, a lot of people out here kind of prefer their privacy. We don't have a mainline infosphere connection, just a, a local connection. And then we get uh, uploads once a week when we go past the gravity storm. Well, uh, when, when is that supposed to happen next? Because we need to make contact. Oh, I'd... S- about to be three days, I'd say. What 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 day is it? Oh, sure. And he he uploads what day it is. <laughs> <laughs> what day was it when we uh, did our confessionals? Oh, so many. Oh, we were no. trapped in there for days. <laughs> uh, uh, by any chance, do you guys keep up with the drifters race? Oh, uh, only since you've been on the show, and then we binged it all after. <laughs> Glad to hear it. I, I just want to make sure that you haven't heard of the next the next stage or anything hasn't happened without us. Oh well, uh, I suppose that'd be on the next upload, wouldn't it? I'm caught up, I think. Oh boy. Well, we, we need, wait a minute. We need... You did, and then you tell me, and then we'll see. We won. Yeah, I saw that. <laughs> yeah, we're supposed to have the second race, but we got sabotaged. Well, you know, they, they cut to different races, so you might not be in the next episode, but still. Mm. Oh, well, has, has there been other other races, other, other, other teams? Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, who's ahead? Uh, let's see. I'll get right back to you, Sam. <laughs> well, Team, Team Electrum's always doing well. Team Electrum is always doing well, and uh, this year's no no exception. Uh, and then uh, the other one is uh, Team Immense Tomorrow. Spooky guys, you ask me. I think they might be trying to recruit for some nefarious purposes. But anyway, the Celebrant of Darkness is a fast ship. They know how to fly it. And they're not afraid of death. I'll give them that. What What are they? Un, undead? I don't know. Huh. Well, I think we need to find a place that, it, that you would recommend that is relatively inexpensive but can work fast. And I know that that breaks your triangle of, of cost. Yeah, so like I said, uh, we could maybe take you to the androids. Maybe you'd get an in there. There's the... the the captains now uh like i said you you know the android uh what do they call themselves the android abolitionist front they uh they might uh be willing to talk with you bob because you're an android celebrity and they they like that uh so that'd be one in or uh, maybe in the the pirates we might be able to put out a word some of those pirates uh used to be old school drifters uh, back in the day. Maybe someone would come and do you a favor. Mm. Uh, team co-captains, what, what do you think? I mean, either works for me. The, the, if we could talk to some of the older drifters, that might actually help us with the whole, uh, you know, other stuff that we're looking into. Bob, do you have, do you have an in with any of these things? Are you, have you ever been contacted by an abolitionist group? I I've no I've never been off Avalon so up until now. Do you do you want to contact an abolitionist group? Probably not. Okay. Uh then let's go talk to the free captains. 
Um, you have uh, seemingly been detected, Bob, and you have a message from the Android Abolitionist Front. Oh, wait. Mm -hmm. Uh, Mm -hmm. I guess I'm being contacted now. It's from an untraceable address. Oh, man, I can't trace this address. (laughs) Do you know how to trace an untraceable address? Accessing. Can I trace an untraceable address? What, What does the message say? Uh, the the message says um, that you are invited to have a conversation uh, on the secret base Chainbreaker One. Share this information with no one. Uh, we'd <laughs> like to do good in the world by androids. All right, and you I'll, can be I'll, a part I'll, of that. I'll, I'll reply back. Um, I have non-android crew members on this ship with me, and our ship is in desperate need of repair. Is that will you be able to help us? Is that okay? One, we're not against non androids, we're just for androids. Okay, two, we c- I'm sure we can work something out if, if you need repairs. We have some of the world, the galaxy's best mechanics. I relay all this information to everyone else on the crew and then clamp my hands over my mouth. Said, I wasn't supposed to tell you guys that. <laughs> um. Well, well, it seems like you guys have a decision. We'll we'll let you make it, but uh, you can always do both. Hmm. I yeah, mean, we need they're willing to make us a deal on repairs and have like good mechanics. We should maybe head to there first and get the ship working, and then we I mean, go talk to the pirates. We can't do better than an invitation, so mm-hmm. yes. Yeah, so if yeah, you could let's go us, there uh, first, I'll reply back to the uh, the ch- what is it, chain breaker one. Yep. Uh, yes, I, I think we'll come and, and visit. Thank you for your invitation. Could you please give me the the location of your secret base and we'll hobble our way over there? We'll give you the location to a location where we'll pick you up. <laughs> oh, OK. They're going to give us a location to a location where they're going to pick us up. Yeah, that's that's fine. OK, I guess I should have said the coordinates to a location, but you know what? I mean. Yeah. You're I going to locate it. the coordinates of a coordinate. That was, was all in binary anyway, so yeah. <laughs> gets lost in translation. All right, so um, well, we can uh, we can take you there presently. I uh, guess we'll go ahead and tow the ship. Oh, since, thank you so much. Yeah, yeah. If you need anything, give us a holler. Uh, we're happy to to ferry you around a bit when we're not on shift. How long is it going to take us to get to that location? Oh, n- nothing's too far away here. It depends on uh, how paranoid they are with their security concerns, I imagine. How much okay. extra flying they do around. I'm just glad you guys paid our turnstile that day. That was the last time I saw my granddaughter. Uh, well, family is important, I'm told. But we're glad we did it, too, because helping strangers is important. Yeah. And I'll never see her again. Wait, what? Well, she got that chameleon skin implant, so she's <laughs> all fine to uh, sneak it up on people. Oh, uh, oh that's uh, that's 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 not too bad, then. I'll. Uh... Which one was this that said that? The red haired one, which you're thinking is Duthane. Okay. I'll I'll make a I'll make a note in my data pad for next season if we need someone else that there's an invisible dwarf that we can talk to. <laughs> oh. Uh and you have the coordinates and the dwarves will tow you to uh where you're picked up by a cloaked ship, a a uh some sort of stealth ship. Um that uses a tractor beam instead of a giant claw to move you guys around. Okay. Ooh. Uh, yeah. Ooh. Uh, 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 I'll you open say up an international frequency. harvester or more of a. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know that tractor. You... Do, do, I, do, do Quentin and I know anything about the Chainbreaker 1 uh, Android Abolitionist Front group? Access um, it. watch guys give me culture checks. Oh man. Ooh, I'm good at those. 
How do you feel about a 24? Yeah, 24 is good. <laughs> so a couple people have a 24. Um, yep. So you guys uh, recognize that uh, the Android Evolutionist Front is an organization that advocates for um, androids across the galaxy. Uh, specifically, uh, they they try to work for the you know freedom and legal equality uh, of all synthetic sentient beings, um, and so they go against things like uh, you know android indenture and uh, the the kind of um, conditioning training uh, training programs that some androids get subjected to and things like that uh, they are also uh, fond of making kind of big stunts and then promoting them on the infosphere hmm, probably why i've never heard of them on avalon i have heard of them my college roommate got involved with them he's currently a traffic light on planet clom Does he like being a traffic light? He does. He chose it himself. I bet work is really stop and go, though. Indeed. Wow. Well, he's colorblind, Boy. so he has issues telling. Thank you. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Good night. <laughs> All right. So, uh, after you, you startledly hail, you're uh, responded to by um, a uh, android woman. Uh, her name, as it comes up on the screen, is 203, but when she introduces herself, she says, Hi, my name's Zoe. I might be able to help you if you are willing to help yourself. Answer me this question, Bob. Do you oh, think okay. this world is just? I, I think that it's just enough for most of us, but it could be better. Hmm. Let me see what I can do to convince you. All right, we're turning off all communications. We're entering a blackout period where you won't be able to find our secret base. All your sensors and outdoor uh, windows will be covered. Okay. This transmission okay. ends now. Okay. I'm going to listen for any sounds of, like, passing cars or anything that we can identify later. Passing asteroids. Yeah. Yeah, like oh, that one was seventy five percent nickel. Uh, so you guys have a little bit of time to yourselves. Okay, oh. I'm gonna go to sleep. What, what do you think they mean by "is the is the world just"? They're attempting to access your definition of morality. Yeah, mm. that's a that's a good way of putting it. Well, I'm still dealing with emotions. Morality will come later. <laughs> emotions are pretty important to morality. I think most I know, that's why I'm working on emotions right them- now. <laughs> well, figure out what makes you angry and what makes you happy, and then I think you can probably go from there. Hmm. Good advice. I'm gonna go I'll eat everything pull out and a then also little sleep. notebook. I'll pull out a little notebook and write that down and then put it back in my pocket. Given a anybody little bit else? of time, does anybody do anything? Uh I suppose now would be a good time for healings, right? Yeah, yeah is there a way to like rest. basically long rest? Because I am like out of stamina and well into hit point damage. Yeah, so they are extremely paranoid and will be flying you around the uh, diaspora unnecessarily for a few hours. So you guys can take a long rest. Okay. I'll, I'll hook up to the power conduit in my room and uh, start my recharge cycle. Does that uh, replenish stamina, hit points, and resolve points? It does. Okay. And spell slots. And any right. sort of class abilities. Right. Is there any cleanup necessary in our uh, quarters? I like that most class abilities work. I'm sorry. Yes. Um, for, for several of you, not for Hecubino, um, but for most of you, there's plenty of cleanup required. Or you can just sleep in the, the trash pile that they left behind. Up to you. Mm, I think I'm going to be spending my... Pile. Time uh, dismantling, remantling, improving traps that they set up in my room. Yeah. <laughs> Going to see if they've injured my plant. Might be uh, smothered under, go- uh, or uh, was it gremlin bodies? 
<laughs> oh yeah, you had a bunch of uh, gremlin bodies thrown in your room, Quentin. <laughs> uh, Squeebo. I'll, I'll see if Squeebo. Squeebo is around. Yes. Well, Squeebo has already partially eaten them. That's um. Yeah. That that's how they got there. That's gross. Mm-hmm. It's very gross. Squeebo uh, seems to peek around the corner of your room. And you see its giant eyes, but then it like darts away. <laughs> then it comes back later and it seems to be smiling again, but it always has that weird smile. It's looking at you. It's horrifying. I'm going to uh, see if I can point some sort of widget directly at the pile and say, Squeebo clean. Uh, all right, Squeebo uh, seems to like perk up, uh, race out in front and says, Squeebo clean, and then finishes dissolving all of the, the um, gremlin bodies. So, yeah. I'll go ahead and deactivate and then we'll- uh, smell sensors at this time. <laughs> Yeah, well, um, Squeebo will give it the full clean. Uh, so there's briefly like this super strong uh, chemical smell. And that's right when your uh, sensors, you know, you're, you flip them off. Um, but later on, uh, when you when you flip them back on, um, Squeebo will put in his uh, normal antiseptic, you know, like lemon mint <laughs> from space uh, scent that does not smell like lemon or mint. Um, but uh, is what he tries to use to uh, to cover up the scent of space suds, or maybe that's what space suds smells like. Hmm. Space suds is benzene hexachloride. So, um, but uh, um, Squibo does benzene's one of the dwarves. <laughs> Squibo does seem to enthusiastically clean your room and then leaves. All right. I'll see if my plant is injured. Um. What kind of plant is it? Uh, some sort of strange vine plant. I don't know that I ever defined it. It's it's something that Quentin found. And he just... Like keeps, a spider plant? Sort of. He just keeps trimming it back and seeing if it continues to grow, and it continues to grow, and for some reason, that entertains him. All right. Um, they have... Uh, seemingly also been trimming the plant and trying to grow it in different sh- uh, shapes. Um, several of which are now vulgar. Those monsters. Quentin activates a subroutine for extreme prejudice against any uh, glitch goblins he encounters in the future and uh, plugs into recharge. Sounds good. Anybody else do anything? Um, when I get to my quarters and I see the data pad, I will like take my own data pad and like copy the, the file basically that says like dibs, like to keep, um, but I'll leave the data pad there. Cause I figure I can use it like a board, it, like, like you do in college. Yeah. Like people can just write stuff on there. <laughs> nice. I like it. Yeah, you you clear the data pad and and you know repost it so that it's uh, blank, and then people can or you know you can write some a message to people if you want. Yeah, yep. Yeah. So I'll I'll write an affirmation for everybody to read for the day. It says, "When things are dark, leave me alone. I'm sleeping." <laughs> <laughs> so inspirational. Yep. Love it. Um, I'm gonna try to download if if they have like well I mean if they I can get it locally since it's already presumably in in this area um, the episodes we missed of Drifters and watch them. All right, cool. Um, yeah, Team Immense uh, tomorrow is definitely th- there. There's some combination of uh, like a gothic undead worshiping. Um, punk band and like a a YouTube boy band. Oh boy. Hot. Um, Like they seem to be pitching themselves at the youth. Oh man. Do do they worship Zonkuthon? 
<laughs> uh, they have a lot of spikes, um, and they are definitely into they, they, a lot of their lyrics involve. They they also write songs. Fantastic. Um, yeah, they're a musical act as well. You guys really need to branch out into that. Apparently. Um, I mean, Beast Mode was pretty good. So, mm. uh, but uh, yeah, no, they 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 a lot of their lyrics involve the pleasure of pain. Sick. Gross. Super hot. Hey, so long as it's consensual and between adults. Unfortunately, these people seem to be trying to basically hypnotize young people. So, hey, fellow kids. Aren't we all, though? Hmm. I can can say that I'm not. All right. Well, uh, you are. Uh, eventually all rested at, at least as as rested as uh you know six hours will get you uh, so if you spent a lot of time doing things other than sleeping or recharging then you still recover all your stamina and all your resolve and all that but you'll just be more tired and uh eventually you make it to chain breaker one which uh as you approach you you uh, they they uh, release the uh, field that's blocking uh, just visuals, uh, and you can see that it is a relatively small asteroid. It's the only asteroid you can see, so it doesn't really tell you anything about it, and none of the sensors are working. But um, it is uh, seemingly uninhabited from the surface. It just looks like a plain, small asteroid. But that illusion quickly fades as the ship flies through the field of the holographic illusion projectors. Then see a highly mechanized base of operations. And as the the ship docks and settles in, there's crews moving back and forth. And you're not sure if you're in a resistance fighter cell or a marketing influencer seminar. Um, They seem to be engaged in a number of political protests as well as heists, and they're simultaneously hacking Infosphere broadcasts to put their side of the story out on both fronts. Uh, and whenever you want, you can open your door and there's like a little uh, gangplank to walk down into the docking bay. Hi, right, Bob, you ready? Yeah, Bob's now wearing a clean pair of overalls that if you look closely, there's this weird stitching pattern that makes it look like there's like little people patterns all over his uh, <laughs> all over his overalls. <laughs> it's quite you stitch them back together. Yeah. Quentin, are you filming this? This is great character development. The pathos. I filming. I believe it's pathos. Really? That's the way I've always learned to pronounce I'll, it. I will open the uh, I will open the pod bay doors. How? <laughs> okay. Um, so there you are greeted by Zoe two zero three. She is a female android with silver skin and turquoise light stripes on her face and hands. That is the, like they're glowing. Um. Her hair is fiber optic cables. <laughs> yeah. uh, her hair is fiber optic cables that change color from purple to pink to green to bright blue and then back to purple. And it's bound in a ponytail. She's wearing a vacuum suit with lots of little pockets and carabiners along with heavy gravity boots. And uh, she walks up. So... Have any more time to think about that question I asked you, Bob? You're all welcome aboard. I I have. um, You know, I'm still relatively new. I'm still working on my emotions, which I I think complicates things. But for now, um, you know, uh, you know, uh, let's let's everybody do what they think is is the right thing. That sounds good. I'd like to uh, persuade you to do the right thing. So, why don't you tell me about uh, what brings you to the diaspora? Well, uh, uh, I'm part of a crew that is part of the Drifters uh, uh, show, and we are trying to win 
uh, many of us for different reasons, me personally, to use the money so I can, as you know, get myself out of the indentured servitude to the creators. And we ran into a lot of trouble. We had some some uh, sabotags going on on the ship, and they, these gremlins just tore tore everything apart. We 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 took care of them. So your plan is to what? Pay off your indenture? That's my personal plan. Yes. You know that's kind of letting them win, right? I mean, that's the way the system is rigged against me. So I don't know what else I can do at this point except to get the money and win. Now, I have made, you know, a fair, a fair, uh, uh, you know, I'm, I'm reducing that amount by quite a bit over the last couple of months. So uh, I think a, a big win here would get me out from under their thumb very, very quickly. Well, look, so in my mind, you're kind of fighting for the status quo right i mean you're you're just being the heroes of the day and winning a race but you're not doing anything to change anything right i mean well how are I'm, you I'm the hero of free. your own story bob uh, i'm sorry what how are you the hero of your own story well i'll be free to go do whatever i want so i can go visit any of the planets and uh, apply my trade there and but what about you know. tens of thousands of your brothers and sisters that are born into that same indenture? What about them, Bob? Well, I mean, I, I really can't do anything for them. Well, it's funny you should say that. So, uh, your friends at uh, Extreme Infosphere Productions. They know Eon Souljet. He is the CEO and arch director of Abadar Credit Systems, or, or just Credit Sys to those in the biz. Uh, did you know that Credit Sys holds roughly half of all Android indenture loans? I mean, there are shell companies and, you know, all sorts of legal protections and the like. But at the end, the great and powerful Abadar, god of civilization, is fine with servitude if it advances the galactic economy for the rich and powerful. Mm. Well, but, that uh, seems like one company having that much control could do a lot of damage. <laughs> yeah, but uh, fortunately, we might be able to do some some damage to them. Oh? Uh, well, Souljet is a big fan of the show, you know? Drifters. Mm. Mm-hmm why Abadar Black uh, is always the premier sponsor of the finale, season after season, ever since he was just a lowly archon of marketing. The credit stick? Unlimited credit? Yeah, I'm familiar. Well, Souljet is now uh, more famous for his show The Axiom of Abundance, the most popular, uh, I guess you call it a religious broadcast slash lottery slash multi-level marketing infomercial on the infosphere. Hmm. Okay. Well, if you can get to a terminal in his office, we can hack into his systems. We have a devotee oh. of Triune here, the god of artificial intelligence, who has whipped up something special. And we think we can leak all the information that Abadar Credit Systems has been keeping secret all these years. And how do you propose that we get into his office? Well, you guys are big drifters hotshots, right? You might have some connections. Might win another race. He's a big sponsor. You figure it out. I, I, oh, we can't uh, win another race unless our ship gets fixed up. Yeah, well, we're going to need a lot of really good parts, and we're going to need them really fast and soon because we are already days late getting to our next our next race well and so the only the only way that i think that we could get into soul jet's office and get close to a terminal would be if we win the race and he is so hyped on on meeting us that we could we could slip in there and get close to the terminal so you could uh, implement your your virus 
then it sounds like you've already figured it all out, haven't you? Well, we do still have the little problem of all the repairs to our ship and the and the fact that we don't have a lot of money to make all those repairs to our ship. <sighs> yeah, we're a little low on funds ourselves, but um, we've got we've got the talent. We can save you all the labor if you can get us some of the parts. We can help you do the fixing. And we've got the facility for it, too. Okay. I turn to co-captains. So, uh, so what's the secret information? Well, if I knew exactly, it wouldn't be secret. But the bottom line is, Eon Souljet is supposed to be involved in some shady deals. Um, specifically, I want to reveal the trafficking of androids against the Pact World Conventions. It happens on the side and people don't realize what it is or they bill people for training programs that are non-optional, things like that. Uh, but it winds up being indentured servitude and that's what I want to expose. Plus, who knows what other secrets they're keeping. I do. Can make you some powerful enemies. Oh, you do, Quentin? I know things. More importantly, I know that... Do you now? Her eyes glow a, a predatory violet. Quentin remains his standard green and or orange, whichever color his face is. Once again, if we can compete in the race successfully and win, it should be no trouble for me and or Bob and or both to access the office that you're needing. Just remember, as a wise man once said, prosperity is the touchstone of virtue. Now that sounds like you've been watching the axiom of abundance yourself. I watch everything. The question then becomes, how much of it do you believe? Uh, well, just be careful. You are what you watch. An oversimplification. I would recommend not being too moral as you may cheat yourself out of much in life. Well, all right. If we have a deal, we have a deal. Uh, let me uh, get a team meeting together. Yeah, take your time. You're the ones on the clock, not me. I understand this is a heck of a proposal. Um, we are going to have to send you back out the way you came in. Our location is a secret. I ask you as a, a matter of Android solidarity uh, that and just common decency, honestly, that if you cho do choose to decline our offer, you don't reveal anything about this. Just because we made the offer in good faith. And we won't reveal anything about you. Sure. All right. Um, if you want to, you can either rest on your ship or there's like a little, uh, it's kind of like a coffee room. It's not much, but it's like a coffee lunch room. I can kick everybody out of there if that's what you want. Your choice. Uh, I think we just need a quick huddle. We'll just run back onto the ship. All right. I'll be around. Good seeing you, Bob. And she gives you like a little two finger salute. I wave back. Yes, nice to, to see you, Zoe. Oh, hey, by the way, you mentioned something about your emotions. Uh, the first one I'd work on, some righteous anger. Oh, okay, I'll, I'll pull out my notebook, write, write righteous anger down, and then put it back in my pocket. And then she walks off. Okay, I'll get everybody back into the ship. Um, let's, uh, yeah, so they're offering, uh, basically labor and a place to get our rep repairs done, um, in exchange for Bob bugging a, uh, high-ranking executive. Uh. Yeah, I mean, I'm guessing all of us would need to be involved. Oh, yeah. But I mean, uh, I would be the one that would be 
connecting to the terminal. Yes, but we have to get you there somehow. Right, yep. right. We ha- we need to win. We need to win races. Yeah, and probably also sneak into this guy's office and like I- I'm distract gonna, I'm, him I'm, and all that. So we made it sound that if he's such a big fan that he might want to meet us if if we win anyway. Like if we won the big the big race, like we're all oh, planning yeah, to sure, do. Sure, sure. Yeah, there's. I mean, there's a difference between uh, wanting to have a drink with us and wanting to let us stick, stick something into his hard drive. Oh, yeah. Well, I, you know, I, we weren't going to get that graphic. I was just thinking of a wireless transfer onto his system. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so here's here's what I'm getting at. This is not. Like, here's what you need to understand, Bob. This is not without risk to the rest of us. Like, just because you're the one taking point in this doesn't mean that it's not going to get Amu shot, right? We don't oh, I understand. Shot. Okay. Now, I personally don't have a problem with Amu being shot every once in a while. Um, because this is a dangerous uh, crew that we signed on to. And we did spend a few days emancipating a bunch of criminals when we were in Akaton, right? So, Bob, if you want to do this and you think that this is going to be a valuable contact that we can maybe call upon on the future, I'm all for doing this. I mean, I'm more than willing to help if we can get labor for free. Okay. Now... We could go talk to the pirates, see if we can get a better deal. By the way, just so you guys know, um, from the quick estimate, you'd expect roughly half the cost to be labor, half the cost to be parts. parts. Um, now, Bob, you can work, but you're only one person, and this is going to take like teams of people. So you might be able to reduce it to m- more like, I guess, 60-40 parts versus labor, but still. Mm. Okay. That's with you like not sleeping. Do yeah. we have a total estimate price? Ships are measured in build points in Starfinder, which is a hazy amount of credits. Um, it, it's uh, it's tens of thousands of credits. Oh boy, it's a lot. Um, okay, so uh, we I need to talk to the pirates anyways to get the parts, considering that we're broke. Yeah, uh, Quentin, you got a horse in this race too. So, what do you think? From a perspective of risk versus reward. This seems to be merely an extension of the bargain we've already made with Rain. We are working to undermine. We are currently working to undermine Drifters as it exists. This is simply an expansion of that from Drifters to the entirety of the network. Mm. Well, I thought we I, were mostly trying to, you know, keep people from getting killed unnecessarily not necessarily like taking out yeah. the show yeah but we that... know that they have people on the inside yeah yeah no that's true and a successful completion of that mission will likely mean the end of drifters as it currently exists whereas the end of extreme infosphere productions is merely an expansion upon that another company may step up to take over production but I have to. Quentin, do you not like extreme infosphere productions? Like is a difficult word. Uh huh. I believe no it more. was Francois d'Aubergine, Marquis de Montenon, who said that sin is not so sinful as hypocrisy. Okay. So, anybody have any strong boiling uh, objections to us uh, doing some corporate espionage in exchange for labor. We would like to not get shot. We'll we'll do our best not to get you shot, Amu. <laughs> yeah. That said, I'll, I'll I'll try to make sure that the bullets hit me instead if that's if that's an option. We'll try to keep most of you alive. Do we have an alternative at this point? Uh, well, we can talk to the space point. pirates see if we can get uh like I said, better deal. Though again, we might need them for parts. Anyways, might need to like uh, do some smuggling for them. The thing is, though, it's like, w- what are we gonna do? Are we just gonna have them like toss us back into the diaspora and hope that we can contact them? Yeah, no, that's fair. 
Also, I mean, it seems like maybe this is a good thing to do. Like, I'm not a fan of, uh, you know, the... I haven't seen what they happened to you, Soki, and honestly, what happened to us back on Akaton. Uh, the, the way that the system works is it's pretty messed up, and everyone should have kind of the opportunity to be able to do their own thing. But you're saying you... Uh... You're saying you can get behind the android abolitionist uh, ideas. Yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely, man. These guys are the underdogs. Like, I, I, really, I really feel for anyone that starts out under a boot, you know? Mm-hmm. And plus, so. you know, if, we, uh, if Drifters winds up getting canceled and we don't get all the money, maybe we can, like, put this on our resume as, like, corporate spies or something. Oh, yeah. There's always work for corporate spies. I mean, basically, petty crime got us to where we are now. So yeah. there's no reason to stop stop here. The benefit of assisting an android is that, barring electromagnetic pulse, they won't forget the favor. Nice. All right. And if you rub our bellies, uh, it brings us, brings you good luck. Wait, really? She'll really? Start rubbing uh, it. I, I don't know. I just thought I'd say something. We reach under Quentin. Is this the belly? <laughs> this has gotten very personal. I'm not sure how okay. I feel about this. Um, All right, let's go tell him we're in. Yeah, maybe we can like borrow a skiff from them or something. I just wouldn't want to take the squeaky clean back out. Yeah, no, that's smart. Especially so they can start working or when anything that doesn't need parts like you know, cleaning up the dead bodies, and we can go looking for parts. Yeah. And All right. So you guys uh, go back out into the docking bay. Mm-hmm. Yes. A a ways off, you see Zoe. Uh, she's consulting with somebody on uh, on the latest spin on their fighter pilot attack on a uh, death orb. And um, you guys, uh, you you flag her down, and she she uh, walks over. So you make up your mind. We're in. Happy to hear it. Um, she uh, spits in her hand and gestures towards you with it. Bob hesitates a moment. That's just spits a little oil. Spits in his hand and shakes. All right. We don't do any complicated contract or any of that stuff around here. It's just, uh, you know, you're in on the circle of trust and that's how it is. So All right. now that we're in the circle of trust, um, we're kind of concerned about trying to get our ship back out of the base. Do you have another like ship we could borrow so we can go find these parts we need? Yeah, we could give you a little shuttle. That would be great. Grace is a firecracker, but uh, yeah, no, uh, ship is in bad shape. We appreciate it. No problem. All right. Well, uh, we will be back over there when things are ready. Let us know. Uh, Bob needs to talk to probably needs to talk to Grace before we. uh, Take off. All right, I'll leave you to you all uh, to it, and then uh, we'll give you a shuttle right over this way. And before we'll, we'll you get it, let us know when you have parts or a lead on enough credits that we can buy the parts, and uh, from there we'll start the repairs. Okay, I'll go back into the ship. Uh, quick question: What did we do with all the gremlins? They dissolved. Uh, the dead ones were dissolved. Oh uh, yeah, what did you do with the live ones? Now that's an excellent question. Yeah, yeah. I thought I thought we had captured them, and Amo yeah, we're going like to try to turn them into torpedoes. Yeah, what do you do? With I mean, them? We, we had a lot of plans. Uh, I remember something about putting them in stasis while we were dealing with the uh, whole crisis. Mm-hmm. Uh, is that what we ended up doing? That's, I know we did. That's it with definitely what. Told you to do. 
Okay. They, they asked you to basically drug them up. Ah. Boy, I hope they're drugged uh, up. Probably. Maybe. So what kind of uh, feels about that? What 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 did Amu do? Because Amu, I think, was left in charge of them. Yeah. For lack of better options, Amu would have actually drugged them up uh, and kept them so they can stay in stasis, uh, at least on the temporary. Uh, but that's probably something that needs to be uh, repeated or watched. Because leaving, you know, the type of drugs to do that to just drip over the course of however many however much time we're going to be away is uh, not medically sound. Also, we don't exactly have a great uh, grasp on gremlin physiology. They seem to be surprisingly tough physiologically. Like, if you whack them real hard, they'll die, but um, they seem to get by on very little food and, like, like junk food seems to be their ideal um, uh, kind of food, like as opposed to even, even like natural sugars. No, they work better off of processed sugars. How do they feel about the cleaning substance? Um, they can't stand it. They yeah, cannot stand it. It burns them. Worth a shot. It's like holy water. Yeah. Does it burn them because it's a cleaning substance? Or does it burn them because uh not really food? <laughs> yeah. Uh they shriek and say it burns us and run away. Okay. Uh so yeah, uh, we will give instructions to the uh to Zoe, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. To Zoe on how to uh maintain the gremlins. Oh while, you uh, we are out. You keep gremlins on the ship, huh? Okay. Uh, recent change. Uh, we. Any that's, that's why we're that's why we're busted up. It's because somebody shot a bunch of gremlins at us. Yeah, normally you kill the gremlins. Yeah, we um, were thinking of shooting them back at someone. We uh, uh. We are a medical professional. As such, we do no harm. Okay, but you go along with other people themselves. that do harm. Yeah, all right. That makes more sense. Uh, Any other surprises I should be aware of on this ship? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We both. Uh, <laughs> uh, yes. Just stay out of everybody's yes, there are. All right, uh, so. Uh, yeah, I mean, you might want to leave them some literature on crate fiends and. Uh, Whatever you've written up on Squeebo. Right. We can do that. Uh, also, you'll need to wake the gremlins about once every six hours for 30 minutes so they can move around a little bit and give them whatever processed sugars you may have here. Uh, Never then... feed them after midnight. Do not get them the wet. The big one's still sucking on a battery, so that should be good to just put down to recharge. Yeah, the, the the one in the crate uh, is pretty chill. Uh, if he asks for a battery, just give him a couple more. But the others, uh, we... They need supervision without us there. And so they've been uh, put into stasis while we deal with our current situation. All right, so I think that this warrants a quick flashback to... Amu attempting to socialize these gremlins like five hours ago while the ship was <laughs> in space. The gremlins are all going wild while he tries to persuade them that, you know, there's a, they're, they can all be friends and get along before he ultimately <laughs> drugs them all up again. Uh, did we determine who their new leader was? I know Vengi killed the old one. I believe um, it was you. You are their new leader. Yeah, right. I, 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 I think I. No, it was it was actually Hecubino, because I. Oh right, smashed, it was Hecubino. He made a whole point of it. Yeah, because I smashed one of them, and it turned out that that was the leader. So, um, 
yeah, they're so you know, assuming that I could have arrested as well as doing this, Hecubino could have gotten involved in trying to socialize them as well. Sure, tell me all about it. Um, so uh, obviously, these guys respond primarily to negative stimulus, right? It's like if they're like jumping around the moment that Hecubino walks in. He's going to have a scowl on and see if that calms them down a little bit. Um, it, it makes them all like that frightened student, like grasping at their desk, like, oh, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Um, right. And you, you grab you grab their attention for a short while. So I'll let I'll let Amu be the carrot and I will be an ever threatening brain exploding stick. <laughs> nice. So uh, one issue you run across is that uh, gremlin attention span is evidently much shorter than you know uh, either recreate yeah, or human sure. yeah so so you know m- maybe that's because some part of them is just infused with planner chaos or something like that um, but it's difficult to keep them on subject for for very long we're like I, I think we really have to just completely play to their instincts. Like, if we let them out, we let, like, one of them out, if if we're like, okay, like, let one of them out, have Amu hand them, like, a data pad that they can just destroy, um, and then be like, okay, now that you got to destroy that, get back in your tube. If he doesn't, then I kick him back into the tube. Um, yep. If he does, then we throw in some like corn nuts in after him. Yeah, like, so they're they're like toddlers. Only it's okay if you kick them, right? So we'll we'll basically do that. We it's let them not out. How you're normally supposed to treat toddlers? <laughs> I was going to say so. Basically, toddlers. Uh, we we let them out to do something fun for them, which is probably going to be destroy something. Um, I'm, I'm sure there's like components that we can't use anymore anyway, or things that got melted together in the process of them being like busted. So we can just have them like break stuff apart that already is not serviceable. Right. Absolutely. They don't really care what they're breaking. Right. So let them out to break something which they're going to like. So that, you know, again, endears them to, uh, or, or, you know, basically socializes them to us. Then we give them a command. If they follow the command, we, uh, reward it with junk food. If they don't follow the command, then we punish it by, you know, forcibly shoving them back into their uh, tubes. Oh well, yeah, they, also- they they're pretty susceptible to just regular old intimidate. Like mm-hmm. you don't like their their fear sense is pretty high. Um, even even without any actual physical action against them, you're able to to scare them pretty well. Yeah, especially so, because you're the boss of them, so they, they you seem to be getting like a bonus, basically. Yeah, so we'll do that. Basically, what we need is for them to, I guess, mostly be afraid that if they get out of line, they're gonna get yelled at or kicked by me. Um, mm-hmm. And also over there somewhere to also know that if they do what they're told, they'll get you know, a bunch of like stale chips that we, that they like rolled out of, uh, um, sorry, I totally forgot Brian's that character's that name. Pulled, pulled a lot of the couch yeah. cushions. Uh, yeah, that we got, uh, that, yeah, that they rolled out of Skritik's, uh, stash. Yeah. There's a, there's a archaic vending machine here on Chainbreaker 1 2 that the pilots sometimes, you know, hammer at to get to drop. Okay, uh, we'll process snacks. We'll we'll definitely uh, suggest that as part of the, I guess, now best practices folder that we're putting together for them. Those brownies were right. like fine break lining. We may use that ultimate reward if the androids are willing to part with the vending machine. We can use it as both a uh, thing for them to destroy and treat for them to da- treats for them to have oh. it might get pretty hard to pull those guys out of a vending machine not if they destroy it 
Yeah, just imagine them stuck inside. Yeah. On the other side of the glass. Then put some quarters in to see how many you get. <laughs> um, one thing you note is that a lot of the um the technology you've seen here in the diaspora so far, whether briefly on that little dock at Hairhod or uh here on Chainbreaker One, it it feels like you've gone maybe ten or fifteen years back in time. Mm-hmm. Um and some of that might be intentional, like like the vending right. machine, for instance, only takes like a physical credit stick that's anonymized. And like, don't get me wrong, those exist, but that's like saying it only accepts cash. Mm-hmm. They're off the grid. Yeah, yeah that's how you keep the Illuminati yeah, from tracking you. Yeah, it's harder to hack their technology if it's archaic, if it can't interface properly. Someone so, else would say because Hecubina doesn't know jack about technology. Oh, yep. Also, there's yeah, that whole like a, what, what do they call it? The radiation storm or something that that's preventing gravity our storm. transmissions. Yeah, there yeah there's go. a gravity storm. Yeah, Hecubina just finds it charming. Like they're like, oh, look at how boxy this console is. He doesn't really understand why any of this is happening. Mm-hmm. Quentin and uh, Bob will certainly notice. We do notice. I'm sure we give each other side eyes. Accidental eye rolls. <laughs> it's so funny because I think of, uh, of you know, Quentin as having that LED eye, you know, face thing. So the concept of an accidental eye roll just doesn't apply. Like, if anything, his eye rolls would be super exaggerated. <laughs> well, literally what happens is his eyes just roll to the side and then come back. So if he gives you the side <laughs> eye, his eyes just go to the side and then come back. Uh, yeah, I, I, if he gets I, really irritated, a, he'll have eyes I, in all directions. It's funny. Yeah, a side eye for Quentin, I assumed would his eyes would be like greater than signs, mm-hmm. right? Instead of just like eyes, what? like letter eyes or circles. They just turn into little yeah. sideways little, pointing carrots. Little apostrophes. Yeah. Than carrot less them. than. Yep. Yep. One's a emojis. big O and one's a what? little O. We don't want to see an eggplant on his screen ever. Gross. Agreed. Very much gross. Right. Wow. Roll twenty will not like. Yeah, roll twenty will not let me type. Uh, uh, gr- less than underscore less than it just completely confuses it even if i put a uh apostrophe in front of it <laughs> yeah i do like the idea of uh of quentin communicating with his face with emojis um yeah. so uh yeah you guys are given a shuttle uh zoe looks at the dossier regarding the gremlins and also, uh, Amu, did you give her some information regarding crate fiends and whatever you were able to come up with on uh, Squeebo? Uh, <laughs> Squeebo is mostly just a warning to stay away and uh, <laughs> don't worry about cleaning any up mess any messes up. Just a hypertext link to. Does the anyone give any instructions to Squeebo or to uh, to? Herman. 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 We still I'm wondering aren't sure how responsive Herman is to instructions. I mean, presumably there are like, like, I, again, best practices, right? It's like, where does Herman like to be? Like, we could just, you know, section off a part of the ship that's large enough that he'd be comfortable and just lock him in there, and he'd probably be okay for a little while. Yeah, yeah I mean, give him some dead uh, you, gremlins. Yeah. Uh, you do know from your extensive knowledge of all life forms, uh, Amu, that Herman is fundamentally defensive. Like, he's not going to go out and attack people who don't attack him in all likelihood. He's an ambush predator. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, yeah, like, Rodrigo's suggestion was the general idea I was going to go with of uh, just kind of section off Herman's part of the ship. Uh, and then the. Folder is going to have uh, best practices, favorite foods, least favorite foods, uh, which is basically 
dead stuff, living stuff. Uh, <laughs> and uh, to approach slowly and subtly instead of uh, and don't look directly at him. Uh, along with a bunch of just weird biological information that is absolutely irrelevant for these purposes. Fantastic. Uh, what do you include about Squibo or do about Squibo? Uh, Squibo is instructed that uh, the androids are friends. Uh, that Squibo clean. Squibo clean. Uh, and but don't clean the androids. Yeah, Squibo. It looks don't down. Worry. Unlike Bob, they won't try to shoot you. I didn't try to shoot no, him. That was uh, Quentin. Unlike Quentin, they won't try to shoot oh, you. Oh, you can't keep your android straight. Wow. <laughs> wow. Jesus. We all look alike, don't we, Rob? Uh, yeah, you try to tell two polyps uh, from <laughs> Amu apart, and then you can talk. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm a biologist. I could do it. <laughs> um. Also, I'm sure by now we've made sure to stash any components that still work um, so that Squibo doesn't accidentally clean them. Yeah. Yeah, we've uh, taken stuff or taken uh, precautions against basically every living thing on the ship uh, from destroying our stuff. If Squibo counts as a living thing. Interesting sure. question. Uh, after Amu puts all of that together, I'll have him send me a copy so that I can actually just turn this into some sort of manual. <laughs> because something tells me that this is the sort of thing that we're going to be handing to people very frequently. Nice. So with that, Zoe immediately stops looking like she got the better end of this deal. It's like, wait, what? what? Your ship's been colonized by some very colorful creatures. Um, I'll uh, motion at Amu. Uh, Amu is a, uh, I believe he referred to himself as a biohacker. So this is a way to have uh, security systems that can't be actually hacked from far away because you can't hack a crate fiend. I, I mean, Amu can, but you can't hack a computer. Yeah. Huh. All right. Yeah. If you want, uh, depending on how this whole deals, deal goes, you know, maybe you can get some more information from Amu because uh, maybe you guys can also have biological components if you're worried about other people hacking them. I say as I lean, like, on like n onto like a giant console that can probably nowadays fit into a Palm Pilot. But but do it completely cluelessly. Yeah, we're okay. Thank you, though. Sure. You guys have a shuttle for us? Yeah, right, right, right this way. Uh, okay. Yeah, right over here. Um, I'm going to make sure to bring my uh, armor components that are not installed, just in case I need to install them. Yeah, that's a good so, question. Does anybody else bring anything of note? Oh, yeah. um, I'm, I'm weaponing up uh, completely. Uh, because we're going to go meet some pirates. So yes, by all means, I don't want anything to get stolen. Same. Yeah, just my walking around gear. Pistol guy, farmer. Most of my gear uh, is already on board. Most of my or most of Amo's possessions are a part of their shell. So. Same. All right. <laughs> so with that, you guys board the shuttle provided to you by the. Android Abolitionist Front on uh, Chainbreaker 1, and you uh, head out into the diaspora to go look for pirates. 
space pirates in order to get parts from them or credits for them to buy those parts to save your ship in time for the big race. Is that what I'm hearing? Mm -hmm. That's what I'm hearing. Yeah, that sounds dramatic. All right. That sounds like a good place to finish this episode. Thank you so much, everybody, for checking us out. Don't forget, you can follow us all on the Twitters, except for Kevin, because Kevin's the smart one. Rob, where can people find you on the Twitter? Uh, Bora Mortal. And Rodrigo. Fearsome Critter. Matthew? At Mighty King Cobra. Brian? At DND Brian. And Samantha? At Samantha Nelson 1. And, of course, you can follow me over at Major Spoilers for all the things that we do and find all of our other podcasts, too, over at Majorspoilers.com. Until next time, here's hoping all of your dice rolls are critical hits. This podcast is copyright 2021 by Major Spoilers Entertainment, LLC.